Did you know that there's a Half-Life 2 reference in War Thunder? In the Arctic ground map, there's an abandoned cargo ship on the eastern side with the word Borealis written at the front, which is a nod to the research vessel featured in Half-Life. If you use a ramp on the side, you can even hop on deck. And if you need to make a quick getaway, the fences on the other side are passed through. UAVs have in-game previews, complete with x-rays, modifications, and even a test flight map. To access it, go to the War Thunder wiki, click on Aviation, use the AVs, pick one from the selection, and click on Show in Game. The A1H has a hidden special weapon available on the right wing. Upon closer inspection, you can notice that it is in fact a toilet. Dropping it will lead to a small explosion, which can take out lightly armored vehicles. Believe it or not, this actually existed in real life, and it's got a pretty interesting story which you can look up. For some unknown reason, upgrading keen vision on a plane with an expert crew gives it a very minuscule debuff. It's so small in fact that it's shown as an exponent of 10. If you manage to blow up the bridge on the German test flight map at just the right time, the train will actually fall into the river and sink down. On cargo port, the shipping containers are marked with what they have inside, such as steel, cars, scrap metal, and if you're lucky, corn. The gunner on the OS2U doesn't actually hold the machine gun in the gunner view. You can RKO planes by slamming into them at just the right angle. If you're in a jet with an ejection seat, diving nose first onto the ground will send your pilot to the shadow dimension. You'll get to keep a seat though. On an unrelated note, but why does one of the Italian tank crewmen sound like Wario? A good portion of the airfields in the game are built on really strange and artificial looking hills. You can draw on tanks using a flamethrower. With a bit of effort, you can blow up your own bombs by shooting them in mid-air. Alternatively, you can also juggle them on your plane. Space. Now it's time for Random Objects in Random Places. This scarecrow in a random field in Fulda. This broken piano in Poland. This shell casing on a hill in Ash River this tree in the middle of a lake in jungle, this floating island in Port Moresby. On most early Soviet planes, there are small sticks that show whether your landing gear is deployed or not. If you load up the 5-ton bomb on the PE-8, the bomb bay gets removed for it to fit. And here is a hydrogen bomb versus a coughing baby. The M19 has two spare cannons on its hull. If you deploy flares on a plane going faster than Mach 1, you'll get a different sound effect depending on your point of view. It's possible to kill a tank using a torpedo. Tail hooks will still work on enemy carriers. Enemy ships nearby will try to shoot you while you're on deck though. One of the most obscure nations in the game is the South Vietnamese Navy, the American Coastal Fleet. An oil leak on a plane will color it black. The rewind system on replays is a bit broken to say the least. The A Servark is one of the only wheeled tanks to have a driver view inside the vehicle itself. The driver will also dislocate his arms if you turn too hard. 
The new stat card images have been pretty divisive, but what we can all agree on is that they definitely need a bit more work. Some are nice and cropped, some of them try to fit the entire plane in the picture, some of them are massive, some are really tiny, some face the right, some the left. Nearly identical planes have varying angles, and then you have some that are really dark. Literally unplayable guys, and fix your game. You can blow up the barrels near helicopter spawns. In the Japan map, you can find statues of lion dogs, birds, and cats lying around. Smoke barrels have physics. If you drop them from a height, they won't detonate until they hit a surface. If you drop them on someone though, it'll pass straight through. So no, smoking does not kill. Shooting these barrels will also cause them to detonate. The BV-238 has a couple of extra crew members that aren't shown in the X-ray view. If you use the ME-163 or the Key-200 in the mission editor, all the AI planes will drop their takeoff wheels in unison. The names of the top tier Swedish light tanks swap between Stridsfordon and combat vehicles, seemingly at random. They both mean the same thing, just in Swedish and English respectively. The windmill blades in Poland have no collision physics. Same goes for Normandy. You can find a hidden variant of the Sherman tank in the mission editor. The planes on cargo port belong to the ESRG Cargo Airlines Transport Company. The name is a play on words of Escargo Airlines, which is a subtle reference to how slow the servers are. On the other side of the map, you can find a big poster of the company, as well as a phone number at the bottom. I tried calling the number, and to my surprise, somebody actually picked up. It was John Guyton himself, and he gave me a free Abram- Nah, I'm just kidding. It's not a real phone number, so nobody picked up. If your tank catches on fire, your crew will disappear. The position of swing wings don't update in the x-ray view. Some of the more modern aircraft have a minimap inside the cockpit. The spawn icons don't really work that well though. One of the G5N1's defensive turrets has a horizontal guidance range of 182 degrees, meaning it can potentially make a 364 degree turn, making it the only play in the game that can shoot in the fourth dimension. Driving over flames from a flamethrower will turn you into Hellrider. On the topic of flamethrowers, if you jump off a cliff with a Churchill crocodile, the fuel compartment will go ballistic. In the Vietnam air map, a big part of the jungle is underwater. Mirrors in plane cockpits can be a bit strange sometimes. Even though it says the vehicle will drown, the turret of the SDKF Z62 can be submerged underwater. Sadly, you can't shoot the gun like this. The trees in Normandy are very symmetrical. And now it's time for your favorite segments, Cartography, where we focus on a single map and its features. This episode we'll be looking at Sweden, a small Scandinavian town based on a Swedish district of Gamlestan in Stockholm, its name meaning Old Town in Swedish. Although the layout of the map doesn't resemble its real life counterpart, the design was clearly inspired by the real thing. Like the name suggests, the map is filled with traditional houses, parks, gazebos, and government buildings. The city is a seaside peninsula, connected by land on the west and bridges on the north and south. Alongside these bridges, you can find lighthouses and fishing boats. Taking a look at the city itself, you can find picturesque North European streets and promenades decorated with lots of shops and restaurants. Some of these buildings include a family coffee shop, a physician, a bakery, a bank, and many more, the interiors of which are surprisingly detailed. Throughout the main streets, there are plenty of trams and railways circling around the city, with the trams having pretty detailed interiors. On the easternmost point, you can find what seems to be a town hall, as well as a monument of some kind. Right beneath them is a lovely cafe with an outdoor terrace. The menus are in Italian though for some reason. A bit further west, you'll find another monument, and this time with stands selling what seems to be milk. Just down the street is yet another government looking building, separated by a courtyard. 
The building kind of resembles the royal palace in real life Gondolstal. Towards the western point, you can see another park, as well as the aforementioned gazebos. Going up the street, you'll find yourself in an industrial complex, which, much like the town, seems pretty old. The entrances are stationed with guard posts, and the complex itself consists of a couple of derelict buildings. Looking northwest from the factory, you can find a castle sitting atop a hill, which resembles the one of Fulva. Although it's a bit low res up close, it looks pretty nice from the city. And with that, this episode comes to a close. Thank you for watching. Special thanks goes to PMAC and everybody else who helped out. If you have any cool facts or maps you want me to check out, let me know by leaving a comment. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.